Sein Gegner ist die aktuelle Nummer 3 der Welt und zweifacher Champion hier bei den European Darts Open. Er ist ein früherer Finalist bei WM und Premier League und ein ehemaliger UK Open Champion. Zeigt die Halle auf den Kopf zu stellen mit Snakebite Peter We only have Premier League and current Premier League talent left in this tournament. So, Justin Pike, his valiant effort is over, courtesy of another 100 average from Rob Cross. Who is going to play Rob Cross next? Be one of these two gentlemen, the ever popular Peter Wright here in Germany. I haven't heard them sing this week. Du bist die Haare schön which used to be the song that made him popular when he first started doing the Mohawk thing. But it's his talent that has got him to this stage. On more than one occasion, he loves this tournament. He's got one of the best records of anybody in this event. Has won it before, of course, but not at this arena. He won it in Dusseldorf at the Maritime Hotel, which is only about half an hour from here. But can he get over Daryl Gurney? After Gurney destroyed Dimitri Vandenberg this afternoon. Thoughts, Merv? I've got a feeling that we're going to see quite a few 180s, and I think there might be a shock. Cards close to the chest there. Yeah, I think there might be a shock. Um, we haven't had a... First leg down to the Rufus. And I think that the pair of these Game could on. well bring it out of one another. So we, we could be treated for a nine dollar. Let's hope so. Rob Cross was on a nine in the last leg of the last match where he left 144 after six and failed to hit a treble 18. I can't believe I said that. Because he lives in treble 18. That's, that's his postcode. <laughs> but Gurney has been much better over the last two to three weeks after he had a couple of drubbings. Wow, what a start from right. And it's a drubbing that he's looking to give Gurney, but yeah, Darrell's been much better. Got himself back on, on the train in the Premier League and a pro to a final where he lost out to Dave Chisnell just over a week ago. And he's just been getting that first start better but it's still not prime a lot of the time it is falling short so he's having to use the 19s a bit more and from 309 you've got to do that if you want to leave a shot the 19s have got to be involved there really 81. if your opponent is in the lead in the leg and you're on 309 the tactic is to go 19s first and if you get the treble you stay there but if you get the single, then you use the 20s. Hopefully, you get six of them to leave 170. He was unable to do so. And Peter's got a, a really good chance of breaking in this first leg. It was a better first start from Daryl. Smart last start that from Gurney as well, because you'd much rather have 130 than 128. There are some people singing in the crowd, but the majority of the people here are engrossed in this because this tournament has been excellent so far. 
And I get the feeling that the, the drama is not finished. The standard we, of darts this weekend has been absolutely fantastic. It really has. Apart from my um, poor effort against Michael, of course. <laughs> Uh, some days they go, some days they don't, and that was one they didn't. Peter now needs a single 20. He's going to stay up top. Double 18. Excellent. He's been doing that a lot the last couple of days. Picking off those shots and punishing the fact that Gurney could not get to a double before him. First blood to Peter. First break of the, the tie between these two. Peter's now looking to stamp his authority on this match at this early stage. If he can hold his own here, then the break stays a break. 60. Got to get your opinion of this place to play move. I have been coming to the European Open since its start, but never played in this arena. I played in Dusseldorf, which I adored. I think everybody did. But never played here. And you have had a fabulous run here before. Well, you made the final. I so what's it like to play here at Leverkusen? Um, it's fantastic. It's uh, everyone that comes in to watch for darts are here to watch for darts. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the atmosphere is, is fantastic. I'm not saying it's uh, not any good anywhere else, but um, I don't know. It's just something about maybe the acoustics in here. I don't know. But it's not too big either. No. It, it's one of those arenas that is full from the back to the front. You go to a place like Risa, where we will visit later in the season, that, if you filled that place up, 100. you could easily get nine, 10,000 folk in there. But they sell about five, five and a half thousand tickets. It's one of the biggest on the European tour, but there's an element of emptiness at the back of the hall. Yes, I agree. It's the same at Maastricht when they play the Dutch Masters there. But here, this place is full from back to front, so it, it has a, a different aura. And to have this as the start of the European Tour is a stroke of genius for me. 60. So we require 161. Ooh, could this be a break back? He started well. He decided not to go for it. 129 leaves himself 32. Pete way back on 181. All he can do is try and put some pressure on Daryl here. That's a sensible play from Daryl Gurney. No point doing anything silly 60. and making things complicated. Do what you need to, to leave a double that you love, and we know that he likes 32. That was only just in the 16. That one. Yet again, he's fallen short. Well, we know that Peter Wright likes a 1-2-1. One, one. He's won in Zarbrücken against Benito van der Pass with a 1-2-1. One, one. Can he replicate that? He's going to do it. He needs a treble 17. He goes next door this time. 31. Now, we've had three very now different games in the, the quarterfinals so far. This one's been a bit cagey. And Darrell will get double 16 in the correct order this time. How's it look? Did that flick the flight on the way through? I believe it did, yes. I think it, he uh, he went for the open bed of the uh, double eight and was a little bit low and it caught the flight. So Peter's looking at 90. He's found a 21st start, another 20. He leaves the bullseye. That would have been just like the last leg. Yeah. Just picking it off when Darrell has failed. This time he does not fail. And he wonder why it took so long to get that leg in the bank. But he has got it. Bit of an indifferent start with these two. I was expecting uh, a little bit more fireworks on this. And of course, Peter opens up with a full house, and that's, that's sort of gone downhill a bit from there. Well, that's true. We were talking about nine daughters yesterday on the European tour, and one, of the, one that came up was Mark Webster's nine daughter against Andrea Velga at Sindelfingen. And Mark hit a nine daughter in the very first leg. And it was most definitely downhill after that because he lost the match. Well, there we go. Shall we have another go? Why not? <laughs> Plenty of 180 signs aloft. 
here in Leverkusen. There's been a few hit. How many have you got on tour? Do you know? Oh, um. Sorry to put you on the spot. Four, I believe. I don't think Peter's got that many. He's only got one or two. Uh, one in South Africa. Uh, one at the UK Open against Gary. That was a great one. Um, one on the floor. And one at the um, Champions League of Darts. On ah, the, the Crondon Park yes, Special. That's the one. And that was against Gary. 59. And your one in South Africa down there was against Wadey. It was. That was the first, first nine daughter in the Southern Hemisphere. Outside of Europe, yeah. Yeah. 58. That was a bit different because we were at altitude and the darts were flying or going into the board quite a bit different from what they normally do. Oh, I don't say that move. What would Peter Wright have used down there? It's bad enough. Phil <laughs> he uses <laughs> different kit when it's not at altitude. <laughs> Phil Taylor's were only just hanging in the board. They were they were literally falling out of the board. Just in pipe like very just much. Dangling, yeah. Yeah. Right. Four nineteens for Bull. Has to go for it. Is that awkward? I think it was a little flat. So now even though Wright has scored a little bit better in this match than Gurney. It may not be of any consequence because Gurney and Wright have just had a few darts in this match that have slipped into the wrong beds. And it's been a little scrappy. Double four for Peter Wright. That might be a good guide. He'll be amazed that hasn't gone in. 62 for Daryl. I would imagine treble 10 first start would be his target. Now, choices. He's going to 20 to leave double 16. 30. Still hasn't honed in on that one yet, apart from when he didn't need it. Eight. Funny old game sometimes, isn't it? And Peter Wright has had two sight as a double four. Surely this time he will get it, and he does. Now, Peter Wright has got so much experience on the European Peter tour, as has Daryl Gurney. Daryl Gurney has not won a European tour event. He's one of the few people left in this tournament who haven't. And unbelievably, the other one is Rob Cross. And they're both a bit freaky, really, because they've both won massive titles and haven't won a European tour event. But I know one man who has, and that is yourself. Uh, yeah, Sindelfingen, if I... Yeah, the home. Yes. The home of the European Tour. Great start to the leg from Daryl. Good reaction to Peter's 140 there. Sets him up. The start of the leg, maybe. Who knows? Third time in this match we've had someone start a leg with a 180. And we live in home. 16. And we're yeah. only in the fourth leg. Yeah, we haven't had a nine-daughter on the Euro Tour since Hamburg last year. Where Van Gerwen broke this Ross Smith curse. It's not going to happen right now. 100. He seems to be getting a little bit more height with his darts now and not falling short as he was earlier. I just had a little whisper in my ear from our colleague Jacques Newlat, who has confirmed to me that Peter Wright has hit two competitive nine darters on the tour. 43. I think there's a, there is a league table to see how many people have hit the most. I think Peter Manley, I don't think he's had one. He's had a couple of really good scares at one. I wish they could count the ones in practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gurney has found his scoring boots in this leg, and the guy in the front row there was just nodding in approval. Might need the lot, right? Gets the lot. All of a sudden, this. Oh, there's the guy who was nodding in approval, and he does it again. Looks like Christopher Biggins. Double 16. For Gurney. That is a great leg, and that might be the leg that just lights the torch for this game. Am I correct in saying here we've had four breaks of throw? Could well be right there. 
We have. We've had four breaks of crow. How unusual is that? It's very it's unusual to see games these days that have 11 holes. And every quarterfinal tonight has been weird and wonderful in its own wonderful, weird way. We had a magnificent contest played in a really good, aggressive spirit between Gezi and MVG. <laughs> Gezi just got pummeled at the end from a, a 1 1 8 checkout. And you'll probably rue the fact he missed the single, fifth, single 17 for tops at the end. And then we had not much the, the controversial game between James and Mensur, but I think it was Mensur just playing every trick in the book within the rules to make sure that James wasn't comfortable. And then the heroic pipe against the ever present brilliance of Cross. And I wonder who she's supporting. Could be Peter. I'm not sure. Could be. 140. I think this the hair might have a... gave it away there, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of any of the top players who would have a haircut like that. I think he's made a rod for his own back, Peter, right? He's... Imagine if he changed things now. And everybody turned up in the, the Mohawk wigs. They'd be very disappointed, wouldn't they? I, I did say to him once, actually, Moon, that he should turn up just with a normal haircut, a pair of black trousers, black shoes, and a black shirt, and see how people react. Right, 102. 10 or 6. Double 16 for another break of throw. And that is a beautiful double 16. There was a lot of land between the point and the coast of that double 16 it was right in the middle five breaks of throw I wonder if someone can actually hold their own throw we shall see it wouldn't shock me if there were 11 breaks I've seen a couple of games like that in the past and they may be the most infuriating games possible because you think when you've broken somebody that you have now got the impetus to go forward and win the match and then when you're constantly flip-flopping and breaking and breaking it's just, it just gets you mentally i never wear flip-flops i hurt my feet <laughs> of course you're not allowed to wear flip-flops when you play professional darts because it's against the rules i actually have a story about a guy in australia called phil gibbs and who cares about my story when they're constantly hitting 180s and that hat is flashing but this game has turned into something rather good all of a sudden after a scrappy start but yeah my friend phil gibbs down in australia turned up in the middle of summer it's about 40 degrees in a darts venue wearing flip-flops and they told him to leave because you're not allowed to wear flip-flops playing darts even in australia too dangerous imagine if you get a bounce out and it hits you in the foot don't do that, kids. You'd be limp at the bit. So if it hit you in the eye, but we're not allowed to wear safety glasses. <laughs> Funny rules. Uh, we love the game. Oh, hello. He's gone. Yeah, he's going to go. A bit different way than the spot. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Doesn't really need to do that. I'm, I'm surprised. From a leg management perspective, I think maybe it was prudent to leave double 16 or leave tops but maybe hitting that four was a little bit lucky because now he can leave 32 for hold the throw you can see plenty of that and there it is it's in the same spot as the previous leg and he's taking this game by the scruff of the neck Daryl straight back in the treble again. There's two. Another 180 for Daryl. Wouldn't surprise me if Peter followed it. He could. He could. Almost. This was a very important weekend for Daryl Gurney. I was talking to his manager, Matt Ward. A couple of days ago about 
what was going on yesterday and got to the stage where again he's so used to playing on a Saturday and being a seed and he's been a seed for a very long time now hasn't had to go to qualifiers for a very very long time almost two years I think it is but that number 11 next to his name that was that's been starting to slip to potentially going forward so the pressure's off for a little bit anyway well last year i only had to do the qualifications once um but because of the the ruling with the seed has to win his first game for the money to count on the rankings that hurt me on about four occasions maybe even five um so that meant i had a bad end to last year which put me in the qualifiers again this year and i qualified for the first two but i've missed out on three and four double 11 for gurney and that is the perfect use of that guide just nestled it underneath with a little bit of kick to the right great response but peter wright still has that break of throw and i have to ask you Murph, Murph, uh is being a seed and having that guaranteed money but it's not ranked is it an advantage or is it added pressure um it's, de <coughs> Excuse me. it's definitely added pressure um i mean uh, you've only got to look at the standard of darts today and uh, being a seed is no different than the person that's qualified to be honest with you the standard's that high so it is added pressure that if you don't win that doesn't count on your rankings I think Gurney is starting to turn up the heat a little bit on that scoring. I think there's a pattern occurring with his game over the last couple of weeks as well. I think he's starting fairly slowly, but as he gets into a match, he really is starting to hit something. Now, he obviously didn't lose a leg earlier against Dimitri Vandenberg, but I think that steady performance from Gurney was enough against a Dimitri that just didn't turn up. And you get that some days with Dimitri. But Peter's got to be careful here because this game has turned a little attritional and Darrell's just creeping up a little bit with the stats he's got more 180s than Peter Wright and his average is slightly bigger 43. he can't afford visits like that I'm surprised he stayed up the top I thought he might have gone for an open bed of the 19s or the 18s with that last start because now he's let Darrell in and yet again another 180 that's twice in this match he's had two in a leg this is not a, a, a confirmed statistic. I just think that Daryl Gurney has the record for the most 180s in a Euro Tour match. Something like nine. But it is Daryl Gurney who doesn't need to go 14 ball there. He just lays up and there was a little grimace there from Gurney. This could be an enormous break of throw because it gets him the advantage back. He could be going all the way in this one. Not a bead of sweat on that brow of right. He's been to the mat many a time in a European tour match. Is it 4 4? Probably should be with that guide. Didn't use it. Didn't use it. He's livid. And now Wright has a chance to really kick him in the gut. I thought this was a non contact sport. Metaphorically. Okay. You can see the disgust on Daryl's face there that he missed that. 25, maybe treble 20 for double five. Yep. Looking at double five. And finds it. Cracking last start from right. I don't think Daryl liked that at all. The finish and the celebration. That was heartbreaking for him. He'd done everything right apart from hit double 16. That was very much like the game between Rob Cross and Johnny Clayton earlier. Clayton was in front. He had Rob Cross on the ropes. He missed three dots at double 12. And after that, Cross went nuts. And Peter Wright, with that 95 checkout, has just put himself within the leg of the semis. Absolutely brilliant. 
pressured that and he was up to the task that's courageous isn't it because i'm a massive advocate for people when they've got 70 left making sure of the 20 and going for the bullseye and the guide from the first dot on the 25 was excellent for him he could have just nestled it over the top but the courage and the conviction on that 70 with two darts was so evident he fancied the double five he fancied the 61st and he hit them both and he's got some adrenaline pumping now. He wants to get it done, 6-3. There's been one or two 180s hit in this match. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> you do fancy there's a lot of 180s when Darryl Gain plays. He's just noted. Well, and Peter, to be honest with you. I mean, he... He's not shy of hitting three treble twenties in one visit. He's hit a lot this season, more than usual. I think his 180 ratio was up on last year and the year before. He's hit over 60 this season. Treble 17 for Bull. Little too high. And now Peter Wright can get this done. How do you reckon, Paul? 19s? Yeah, looks like down the bottom. 12 ball. And he went for the treble, he's found the 12. Bullseye for the match. 56. I think he thought that was in when he threw it. And now Gurney will definitely look at 17 for double 16. He can't afford to miss it this time round. That's in the way. Slight adjustment. Oh, it's happened again. He's gone through the ring. How has he done that? He's gone through the ring. Well, 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 that one's going to be on YouTube in about one minute's time. But the phone book is going to say that Peter Wright's in the next round. And he is. Just the shots at double 16 across Darryl Gainey in that match. He really did score well, but unfortunately for him, Peter Wright doubled better and timed his doubling to absolute perfection. What a semi-finals we have for you. Starting with MVG against Mensa Sulevic, then it'll be cross right. Do not miss the rest of this evening. It's going to be phenomenal. Peter Wright zum Einzug ins Halbfinale. Peter, you won this you won this tournament twice in the final last year. Yeah, you have, you have. In the final last year, now in the semifinals, you seem to like Leverkusen a lot. Leverkusen is a brilliant place and uh, full of amazing fans. Ja, ich habe gesagt, äh, zweimal hat dieses Turnier bereits gewinnen können. Letztes Jahr stand er im Finale, jetzt wieder Halbfinale. Er scheint Leverkusen ganz gut zu finden. Er sagt, Leverkusen, das ist ein toller Platz mit tollen Fans. Peter, in the context of the match, a key moment, the 95? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, otherwise, I was in a lot of trouble. Uh, obviously, he missed a few darts, a double, but I uh, know. Uh, I tried to get angry against Daryl. Uh, I'm not an angry person, but uh, I tried to get angry against him. It's very difficult, but... <laughs> Ihr habt gesagt, äh, ein ganz wichtiger Moment in dieser Partie ist sicherlich das 95er Finish. Sonst wäre Daryl Gurney noch mal rangekommen. Da hat er zugestimmt, da wäre er vielleicht noch mal in Schwierigkeiten gekommen. Ähm, Peter, best of luck in the semifinals. Thank you very much. Peter Wright.